Hey guys! In today's video, I'm going to show you 4 creative DIY gift ideas for art lovers. They are easy and fun to make and your friends will absolutely appreciate them. The first idea is to make these cute charms that look like art supplies that you can make into keychains, necklaces or even pins. For this DIY, you will need shrink plastic sheets. Let's start with designing a few images first. I wanted to make artist palettes, brushes and also color palettes. So first I sketched out the outlines and then created a proper outline I can trace. Remember that shrinking plastic shrinks by about 40 or 50%. So you want to create a design that is about double the size as the size you want to have in the end. Once you're happy with the image, you can trace the outlines onto the plastic with the rough side looking towards you. For the outlines, I use black and gold colored markers that are waterproof so nothing gets smudged. And now it's time to color everything. For the shrinking plastic I'm using here, I can use either colored pencils or markers, so I use both just to try it out. Since I used watercolor pencils, I also decided to use some water and blend the pencils to create an even look. But I also used silver and other colored markers that are also waterproof just to see how it will look in the end. And to intensify the outlines a little bit more, once I colored everything, I traced the outlines again using my black marker. Once you're happy with your designs, cut everything out really carefully. And then you can use a hole puncher and punch out holes where you want to add the jump rings for the necklace or the keychain. And if you want to make some charms into a pin, you can just leave everything the way it is. And now it's time to bake everything. But be sure to read the baking instructions first before you do that. With this shrinking plastic, I had to set the oven to 170 degrees and bake it for just a few seconds. Once they start curling up, they will start shrinking and shrinking even more until they lay flat on the tray again. And this is how my charms turned out. Which one is your favorite? And now you can transform your charms into necklaces, keychains and pins and the first gift is done. Super fun and easy to make and you can really customize everything to make it even more personal. The next idea is to create a set of blank art trading cards where your friend can paint or draw their art to trade with others. All you need is some paper and these card sleeves you can get online if you want the cards to be protected. Begin by measuring out the paper you want to use for the cards. I use watercolor paper and use the size of my card sleeves. This is also a great way to just trade different watercolor papers and let your friend test some of the paper you might have. And then you can go ahead and put the paper into the card sleeves one by one. Now to make it into a cute package, we can wrap some thread around the paper to make it into a bundle and then add a gift tag and some decoration to make it even cuter. I find it such a cute and fun idea and it's also a great stocking gift. The next idea is to create this Mondrian inspired jar that you can use as a gift, pens or even candle holder. All you need are window colors or glass panes and an empty and clean jar. His style in the art movement he was part of was famous for the geometry of straight lines, squares, rectangles and the use of pure primary colors with black and white. And this is what we want to recreate. Begin by adding lines using black window color to create the outline of the painting. You can use a reference photo for that but you don't have to copy it exactly. You can just follow the style by creating different lines and different size squares and rectangles. Once you cover the outside of the jar with the black pen, we can now use the primary colors such as blue, red and yellow to fill some of the shapes. Again, you can do it randomly or use a reference photo to get an idea where to add which color. For the rest of the shapes, I used black and white colored window color to finalize his style. And now all we need to do is wait for it to dry. In the meantime, we can go ahead and also color the lid of the jar. Here I used black acrylic paint and applied it using a sponge brush just to create a nice even surface without any visible brush strokes. Once everything is completely dry, we can finally place all the small gifts inside the jar. You can add charms you've made, the art trading cards and other things like small tubes of paint, erasers, sharpeners and maybe you have something else you would like to gift. 
and when your friend removes everything from the jar again, he or she can use it as a pen or brush holder or even as a candle holder for a beautiful and cozy light. The last idea is also super easy and fun to make and it fits perfectly into any artist room. To make this artist palette wall clock, you will need some thick cardboard and then we can start sketching out the palette using a pencil. We could have also used real wooden artist palettes for that, but I thought it would be easier and more affordable to do it this way. And it works and looks great as well. Once you're happy with the outline, you can go ahead and cut everything out really carefully. And now we need some paint to make the cardboard look a little bit more look like actual wood. For this step, I'm going to use ochre, brown, black and some white acrylic paint that I mixed together until I was happy with the brown shade. But you can of course use any color you like. Once everything is painted and has dried, we can move on to the next step. And that's adding the actual clock aka the movement machine and the clock hands that you can get really cheap at any craft store or online. Begin by measuring out the center of the palette but you can also use any other spot that fits better with the palette design you were going for. And now we can cut a small hole into the area we just measured out. Do that really carefully and try to remove as much excess cardboard as possible around the hole or it will be more difficult to properly add the movement machine. Once you created a small hole that is big enough, add the machine to the cardboard so the mechanism shaft looks through and then you can attach the rest of the clock. First the washer and the locking knot so everything is firmly attached together and then add the hour, minute and the second hand. To make sure the machine doesn't move on the back side, you can also attach it with a tape or use glue to make it even more sturdy. And this is how our wall clock looks so far. Now we can either leave it like that or add a few paint drops on top. You can just add the paint drops randomly or really pay attention to the time and add the drops following the outline of a clock. My drops weren't super symmetrical because it wasn't super important to me for reading the time, but if you want you can of course first create guidelines so you know exactly where to place the paint. And this is how it looks. Now we just need to let it dry until the paint is completely dry, insert a battery and your handmade wall clock is finished. Let me know in the comments below what was your favorite gift in this video and what other gift ideas you would like to see in the future. If you need more ideas, be sure to check out my playlist with tons of other DIY gift ideas right here. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new here and to click on the bell button to get notified whenever I upload a new video on Thursdays and on Saturdays. Thank you so much for watching guys, have a wonderful day and I will see you soon. Bye!